Hey, what's going on? It's Green Thumb. So, uh, we're not in the garden today, but we're going to be in the garden real soon because this little space you see right here, we're building an indoor winter garden. We're in my basement, so we got a couple of things we got to work out. We have a heat register on the ground right here. We've got a little casement window up here that's very poorly insulated. And um, I've got a ceiling that's unfinished above me, so I've got access to the floor joists. So we're gonna make this thing, so along this wall here, we're gonna make this garden about, give or take, 10 feet long by roughly eight feet out this way, seven, eight feet, kinda depends. And uh, we're gonna hang a bunch of LED lights up in the ceiling. I've got two different lights. I've got a really, really powerful 32 di 3200 diode professional LED, and then a smaller one that's kinda like a platter. It's 14 by 14, give or take. So we're gonna hang those from the ceiling. We're gonna be growing things like uh, lettuces, multiple kinds of lettuce, Swiss chard, spinach, peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, radishes, um, and anything else I can literally squeeze in here and get it to grow. So uh, the things that we're looking for is the tomatoes and the cucumbers that we're gonna grow have to have a really fast date of maturity for harvest. And uh, so the cucumbers, we're gonna grow smaller cucumbers because they grow faster and more prolifically. So that way we actually get more cucumbers in a shorter amount of time. And the tomatoes, we're gonna do, I would say two, maybe three kinds of tomatoes. We're probably gonna do a small cherry tomato type we're going to do a larger slicer type. Um, I'm not too sure uh, which ones I'm gonna do yet. I gotta do a bit of seed shopping. Uh, for those of you who are looking for seeds, and my gardener, it's where I get all of my seeds from. He just opened up his store for 2023 seed sales. I, last I checked, they were 99 cents a seed pack. Phenomenal seeds. I always have amazing germination. And I mean, if you guys trust me where I get my seeds from, I would suggest you go there. Luke also has his own YouTube channel. He teaches all kinds of stuff. That guy is a wealth of knowledge. MIGardener.com, he's on YouTube, MIGardener. Easy to find, just, just look it up. Um, so I need to buy tomato seeds, so that way I can start my tomatoes. Um, what we're gonna do is, chances are right along this wall, because that's gonna be the largest section, I'm gonna get two five gallon buckets from work. I'm going to put T posts in them sticking out of the holes cause they've got the, they're from oil. So they've got the holes in the lids. So I'm gonna put T posts down them after I fill them up with crushed stone. And that way they'll stand up straight. And along this wall that you see right here, we're gonna run trellis netting and I'm going to trellis the cucumbers and the tomatoes along this wall, kind of espalier style. So I'm gonna tie them off and control their growth and I'm gonna keep them as low as I can so that way when they get tall, because I've got seven foot tall ceilings, the top of the plant, I'm worried that it's not going to get as much light as it requires. So I'm gonna try and keep the plants as low as possible and I'm gonna spread them out sideways as opposed to letting them grow tall. So that's all kind of a a work in progress kind of deal. Um, so yeah, I've got on the ground behind me, I've got beer. Beer is mandatory for a construction product or project. I've got bags of soil. I have uh, plastic sheeting back there in a bag. I've got some drip trays. I've got, um, I think they're three quarter inch staples. We're gonna hang all the plastic along the top here. Uh, we're just gonna staple it right into the ceiling joists with, uh, with staples. And then when the project's over, it's gonna be easy to take down. I'll just pop all the staples out and roll the plastic up. And if I'm gonna do it again next winter, everything's gonna be cut and ready to go. Um, here with the heat register, because I want the greenhouse to be warm. I know the LED lights is gonna really make it warm, but 
I'm going to bring the plastic down just to the top of here, right across here. So that way the heat from that register can also come into the greenhouse and keep it nice and warm. In the middle of the winter, when it's minus 30 or minus 40 outside, this basement's gonna get cold. So I need to make sure that the plants stay nice and warm or their growth is going to really slow down. So um, let's get started. Okay, cool, let's do All this. Right, guys, so this is the plastic I'm gonna be using. They're painters drop sheets. They come in different thicknesses, okay? And this is 10 by 25 feet. So I'm gonna have lots, I have two rolls of this. It's not super, super thick, right? But it's definitely gonna be enough with the LED lights and the heat register behind me to keep this greenhouse nice and warm, okay? So this is what we're gonna use and we're going to staple it to my ceiling. Um, for those of you at home who wanna do something like this, uh, a pack of this stuff at Canadian Tire was uh, about $13. Cost efficient, um, you can buy much heavier gauge plastic like, like actual poly plastic that comes in the big rolls. Uh, but last time I checked that stuff is 75 plus dollars for a roll. And I, I can't justify spending that. So. so for you guys who wanna do something like this at home, you can do it super cost efficient. I mean, obviously your most expense, your biggest expense is going to be your lights. Um, you can buy used lights on Facebook Marketplace if you want to go that route. Uh, I got mine from Johnny's Genetics uh, here in town. So super awesome guy for you guys that are local. Um, Johnny's Genetics is the place to go. He's having a massive big Black Friday sale thing. Too. All right, so we have the uh, 10 foot marked out from the back wall. There's a window I mentioned, okay? And here's my 10 foot mark. Right there. So we're pretty much essentially just gonna trace it up the wall, figure out what set of ceiling joists it's gonna work best on. And see the problem here? There's our 10 foot mark. I've got a copper pipe right in the way. So we are going to move it to the next one and uh, we're just gonna go with that one instead. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to staple it all the way across and uh, hang it, okay? Easy peasy lemon squeeze. And here's the staples I'm gonna use. Using the DeWalt stapler. And we're going with 9 16 because that's the biggest that they had at the store. All right, so here's what we got going on. Got the duct for my dryer right here. So I just cut out a square, stapled it up into the corner, you can't see it. And I'm just working my way across. Right there. Hang on, there. So that's it. Just gonna work my way across like that. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna come back and the plastic, you can see how it's folded over. When, I, when it's all hung, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna fold that hang, that lip down right there, you see, and I'm gonna staple that again so there'll be a secondary run of staples, okay? So I'm just gonna keep working. Oh, doesn't fit. Take a little one out, drop a big one in. It's really annoying when you're trying to work on something and you, uh, Run out of staples. Okay, so here we are. We got it all. It's gonna be hard to kind of tell guys because it's all close, but look. So we're all attached all the way around. So that one 20 foot or 25 foot by 10 foot has done the first wall you saw me fill on, film on, the second wall, okay? And across the back wall. And it pretty much brought me right to the corner of the back wall. This is the wall I was telling you I'm going to grow the tomatoes on. Let's see if I can get a... I uh, can't. All right, so what I ended up having to do is you see this cross member here? That's where I ended up actually 
stapling the, the long exterior wall to. So this gives me, I think it's about six and a half feet of width and we are 11 feet long. So, sorry guys, it's really hard to, it's really hard to film in here. I'm trying to get you guys a good view, but. So you can see where I've cut around the dryer duct. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I got to put a, a door in that end somehow. So what I will probably do is because, because this plastic is not the thickest, every time you pull on it, it's going to tear along the staples a little bit, right? Even though I've folded it over. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I got to figure out how I'm going to install a door in the back. So what I might just do is make a slice from top to bottom and then take another piece of plastic sheeting. I've got, uh, I've got a whole nother roll. So what I might just do is there's the back. I might just make a slice top to bottom and then take another roll of that sheeting, maybe five feet across, four feet across, and then staple it here and then just let it hang down. And it'll act kind of, it'll keep, it'll, it'll act as a barrier to stop a lot of the heat loss. Because if I just put a slice in it, right, then every time I go in and out, I'm gonna have to pull it open and I'm going to lose all that heat. So at the moment, I think that's, Probably the plan is I'm just going to hang a secondary sheet down here to act as a as a barrier. So that's that's where we're working with right now. So 11 feet long and I think six and a half feet wide. I'll have to take a second measurement, but that's what it's looking like. And then we'll spin around here and then you can see there's the bottom of the heater. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pull this wall down fairly square and then I'm going to cut around that heater and then I'm going to remove all the plastic away from it so the heat from there can billow into here and the heat the rest of the heater that runs down along the rest of that painted wall will be able to heat the other side of my basement right good okay that's where we're at sort the rest of that part out after so look at that we've got it off of the heat register now it's going to dump the heat from there into here i might just put a couple of uh couple of loops of duct tape behind there like coil up the duct tape with the sticky part out on the outside and just stick that plastic back to that back wall Now we have a door. Hang something heavy from the top. It's 
gonna hang a straight line. I just used my string line. I couldn't snap it because I couldn't get the plastic tight enough. But uh, now I've got a door cut. again. So I've stapled it across the top. Now I'm going to fold that flap back down over itself. got here hang on okay so I had uh, strips of heavy-duty poly that I used uh, that I used to wrap the greenhouse with but I didn't have full sheets long enough to go top to bottom so I just taped two pieces together with tuck tape and uh, now I have a door see I can just move it aside go through into there and this is going to hold all the heat in insta door two minutes flat easy peasy all right so now uh, i'm going to hang the plastic sheeting against this wall here and i've already cut off 12 feet of it and i'm just going to uh, staple this up but because i have the duct here I'm just going to staple it underneath. And this is just essentially to keep some of the moisture in and keep some of the heat in, that's all. And I'm gonna do the same as before. I'm gonna staple it lower than the top and then I'll fold it over and then I'll staple it a second time. So I'm just gonna tuck it into the corner like that. Oh yeah. Staples don't like paneling, apparently. Maybe I'm on the wrong angle. Let's go this way. Wow. All right, well. So I'm just gonna work my way down the line there. Okay, so here is what we got accomplished at the end of day one. We've got the long side strung. Here's the front side. There we go. We've got uh, the door installed, cut up around the ductwork. Everything's been double stitched across the top. We have the door installed and I'll just stand at the door here so you guys can see. I folded that down, did a double stitch across there. I've rolled the plastic out from the floor and out on both sides because the plants are going to be all generally around the sides, I figure at this point in time. And I've just got the soil just sitting in the middle. I'm going to blend up some soil. I've got some Pro mix over here. I've got some worm castings in a bin. I've got some uh, composted cow manure outside. And uh, this is. So I bought the last two. I bought the last two bags of Pro mix. Uh, and it's got mycorrhizal spores in it. There it is. So uh, that's going to help it. And. Uh, I use this stuff in the springtime 
it wasn't the best, but it's still a Promix product, so it's still pretty good. So I've got two bags of that, one there, one there. I uh, got some of that, which is also a potting mix. And I've got some perlite, because uh, when you're growing inside, you know, it's probably not going to drain as well as it would outside because the sun's not going to bake on it and stuff. So I'm going to add lots of perlite to the mix so it's going to drain properly because the last thing we want is a soaking wet soil mixture inside the house. And so everything is going to have drip trays underneath it. That way I can kind of monitor the, uh, the moisture levels and everything. And I picked up a few drip trays because I wasn't sure uh, how many I was going to need of what size. So I've got a couple of 12 inchers and I've got a couple of 14 inchers. But we're only going to have a couple of plants growing in those big ones, tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers. Uh, and then I've got a couple of more other drip trays. These are I'm repurposing these. These are uh, lids from fruit trays. But, you know, they're going to work as a good drip tray. And they've got high size. So I've got a couple of plants already upstairs ready to come down. And tomorrow... So there's the ceiling. Tomorrow we are going to hang uh, the, the big long LED light. The ones that you guys saw in my greenhouse this springtime. The 3200 diode light. That's going to get hung somewhere here and it's on strings on ratchet strings so i'm going to bring it low to the ground and down here in the back i'm just going to start all of my seeds underneath it and then as seeds start to sprout uh, they'll get transplanted moved into pots and then we'll just start lining the ground with pots on some sort of drip tray apparatus whether they're tote lids or boot trays or whatever just so none of the water hits the floor so that's all it that's it for today guys i'm going to uh edit up this video and post it up so if you like what you see and you're interested to see where this thing goes uh like and subscribe to the videos and to the channel and do all the things and hit the thumbs up and do all of that cool stuff and uh you can see what kind of jungle we end up growing in here all right, have a good one. See ya.